Every night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heavens and He calls out, calling out, saying, what does He say? He says, who is there seeking forgiveness? At the time when the third of the night remains, who is there seeking forgiveness so I can forgive? Who is there repenting so I can accept? Who is there asking me any of their needs so that I can give? If you look carefully at that hadith, there is no precondition of having fulfilled tahajjud or having read salah. It's an open invitation from Allah to say, you want to seek forgiveness? Here I am. You want to repent? Here I am. You want to ask me anything? Here I am. I know of people who set their clocks for the time of tahajjud, even if, even if, subhanallah, they haven't fulfilled the tahajjud, but they will get up and call out to Allah, feeling the presence that, you know what? I can, this call is from Allah, yaqeenan. There is no doubt that Allah is calling. Imagine when you get up and you can actually look at the time and say, wow, Allah is calling. Allah is calling me. Oh Allah, I'm the one. I'm seeking. Oh Allah, me. I want forgiveness. Oh Allah, forgive me. I have a need. I'm calling out to you. I know that you're, you're here to answer me. Call out to Allah. He will give you what you want. If it is tawbah and istighfar, He will forgive you. If it is anything else, He will grant it to you when He knows it's the right time. He will give you what He knows is better for you. Subhanallah. So this is the time of tahajjud. That is the most blessed time of the night. It's the early hours of the morning, we call it, right? The, th the last part of the night is the time of tahajjud, its splendor, its goodness, its greatness. Meaning the value of that night is not based on the tahajjud, but it's the night itself. The fact that Allah is calling out and Allah descends to the lowest heaven. So now you need to know something. We will call out to Allah, but we will also engage in ibadah. Ibadah meaning acts of worship. Call out to Allah. I need to thank Allah, praise Allah, subhanallah. So there are few things you should do and could do. Number one, dhikrullah, the praise of Allah, the remembrance of Allah. The Quran is part of dhikrullah. You can read the Quran. It's a blessed time. Subhanallah, you would actually be encouraged to engage in Salatul Tahajjud with units of two, two, two. Salatul Layli, Mathna, Mathna. The Prophet ﷺ says that the, the Salah of the night is read in twos. So we read them in twos. That's the recommended, the proper way of doing things. So you read them in twos, but on condition that you are doing it with your whole heart, no rush at all. And you do it for the sake of Allah. At that juncture, and at that Time when you put your head on the ground in sujood for the sake of Allah, you are actually the closest you could ever be to Allah. Akrabu ma yakunul abduli rabbihi wa huwa sajid. The closest that a slave can be to his Lord is when he is in prostration. You know, when you want to look at the value of prostration, ask yourself, would I ever put my, he my head down in that condition in front of a king or a, or a person or a, or a monument or a statue? Absolutely not. Never. Worship is for Allah and Allah alone. So that's why no matter how big I may be, how wealthy, how powerful, how healthy, how, how many kids and grandkids and great grandkids I have, but I am nothing but a slave of Allah, the Lord of the worlds. I will drop in sujood for the sake of Allah. تَتَجَافَى جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِئِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا Surah Sajda speaks about those who forsake their beddings at night in order to worship Allah. Allah praises them and tells them, for you is Jannah. Jannah. You really believe in the last day. Because to worship Allah at night, Nothing will inspire you unless you really believe in Allah and the last day. We have problems. We want solutions to our problems. At one stage, I tried asking people who came to me to say, I have a problem. And I tell them, did you call out to Allah in the last third? 
so many people used to say no that I stopped asking I just used to inform them try calling out to Allah imagine we saying try calling out to Allah what try you are supposed to start off by calling out to Allah if you have if you have a problem and you haven't made tahajjud or you haven't called out to Allah at the time of tahajjud and you are going to seek solution elsewhere you've lost the plot you've lost the plot it's Allah Allah has the solution to your problem Allah has everything and you haven't yet called out to him and you're coming to me and to others to help you to resolve a matter when Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal was not called out to where is your ibadah of the night you need it subhanallah may Allah guide us so when we speak of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I guarantee you and I'm telling you, he did not need to call out every day and to make dua and istighfar. He was not a person who was sinful at all, but he did it so that we could follow that example. Here we are claiming to be the lovers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many of us have read Salatul Tahajjud in the last 30 days? 30 days gone by. You haven't even read Tahajjud. Brother says, I get up, but because I need a bath, you know, I feel lazy. What? How could you say that? How could you do that? Subhanallah. When you were intimate with your spouse, it was nice. You enjoyed it, right? Remember, the bath is part of the package. Allahu Akbar. May Allah help us. It should be an honor. But I'm shy. You know, people will hear the water at that time of the night. They know what happened at night. How can you say that for the sake of Allah? Teach your children and your family members. There's nothing wrong. They need to know when they grow up that I will shower. So what if everyone in the house knows what happened? It was a sadaqa. Let it, let it be. Allahu Akbar. We are shy of halal and we are not shy when it comes to haram. How many men are aware of the girlfriends of their friends, but they cover up when it comes to their wives? Why? Because a lot are guilty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So to have that shower, I'm saying a shower, but we're talking of a ghusl. At that time of the night, for the sake of Allah, is an ibadah. Remember that. It's an act of worship. How many of you, or how, let's word it differently, how many of us would miss Salatul Fajr with the excuse of I need a shower? A'udhu billah.